Hello, everyone. Though it was anticipated, the defeat of Brazilian President Herr Bolsonaro, considered the most polarizing and right-wing in the nation's recent history, is unprecedented. Never has an incumbent president been defeated in that country. The winner, Workers' Party leader Luis Inacio Lula da Silva, popularly called as Lula, is a two-time president. A leftist leader, he has stood for issues diametrically opposite to that of Bolsonaro. The world takes note of Brazil's election and the return of Lula as president as the issues involved and their significance transcends the country. We have the Federal's managing editor, Mr. K. S. Dakshinamurthy, who specializes in international affairs, decode the elections for us. What is the significance of the Workers' Party leader, uh, Luis Inacio Lula da Silva's victory in Brazil's presidential elections? It is uh, extremely uh, significant for Brazil, and it is also a kind of uh, eye-opener for the rest of the world. For two reasons. One, that the country could actually um, you know, turn around and defeat a person who's in office, that is uh, Bolsonaro, that is, as you uh, rightly pointed out, that has never happened in the past. Now, the issue here is that Bolsonaro is an extremely polarizing right-wing leader who has uh, been amongst the most controversial um, presidents that uh, Brazil has seen. Um, his uh, uh, defeat, though it was uh, highly expected, um, also came as a, you know, it's when it has actually happened, it is uh, thrown up uh, issues. For instance, Bolsonaro um, is, you know, in the mold of, let's say, uh, the former US President uh, Donald Trump. Uh, Bolsonaro, in fact, uh, threatened and said that he would not accept the election results if he uh, does not win. In fact, as we speak now, um, he has still not formally accepted, uh, you know, the, that, you know, or he's not formally conceded defeat. And um, there are a lot of fears that uh, he may actually challenge this um, uh, result. And for, for instance, you know, you already have, there are reports of um, uh, people uh, assembling in certain parts of the country, attempting to block roads and trying to uh, kind of kick up some kind of a, a resistance to his uh, defeat. It's very similar to what happened in the US. So it is not going to be easy. The reason for this is that, uh, as I said before, Bolsonaro is a very polarizing um, right-wing leader. And very he changed the you know many things uh, in uh, in uh, uh, brazil the way the brazil was governed in terms of uh, his rule the laws that were passed he openly sided with vested interests to the extent that um, you know it caused a lot of alarm within uh, brazil in the case of uh, so this is as far as bolsonaro is concerned now how did lula manage to defeat him Lula is already a two-time president, and he is a is a he was a leftist. He comes from a very very poor working class uh, background. He was hugely popular in the two terms that he was in office in the earlier part of this uh, century, right? And not only that, um, when he uh, left office, that is after two terms, when he uh, did not contest again, his popularity rating was about eighty percent. It's unprecedented. So you can imagine. So Lula was uh, you know a hugely popular guy. And Lula also got into you know some kind of difficulties in the sense that uh, there was a uh, he he was caught in a uh, corruption uh, allegation, and in fact he went to jail in uh, what is known as the Operation Car Wash, where um, you know he was uh, convicted for uh, some kind of a bribery deal. Eventually, last year the Brazilian Supreme Court overturned the entire verdict. Because it was proven that the judiciary at that point in time and the prosecution, they colluded and right. they sent him to jail. So his popularity became even higher. And at the same time, the, the popularity of Bolsonaro was slipping. In fact, last July, July 2021, um, you know, there his, uh, the disapproval rating for Bolsonaro went really high. It went to over 50%, about 51% uh, disapproval rating. So in that sense... Um, it became a real conflict between the left and the right. And uh, so this is what, um, uh, and then the world, you know, we see why this is significant for the world is also because we are not seeing this only in Brazil. This left versus right is happening around the world. And what is happening in Brazil, you know, is something that uh, could be indicative. We don't know. We just have to uh, wait and see. I, I just want to uh, ask you more about uh, Bolsonaro. 
Uh, why do you think you know the the incumbent president uh, Bolsonaro lost the elections? See, number one, uh, Bolsonaro was hugely. I mean, he was unabashedly right wing, and he made no uh, secret of his uh, uh, dislike for the left. And he, what he, and then there are two specific uh, uh, examples which really pushed him down. One was he did not take the COVID pandemic seriously. Hmm. And there was a lot of criticism in the way he handled it. Initially, he even refused to acknowledge that there was a, a pandemic in the first place. So hmm. much so that the Brazilian health system was almost dormant. It never reacted swiftly to the crisis. Around 7 lakh people, 700,000 people died uh, in Brazil's uh, pandemic. It's one of the highest uh, uh, in the world. So this was a, uh, an issue uh, that uh, caused him uh, caused a huge uh, disquiet amongst the population, and he became hugely unpopular. The other important thing was the Amazon rainforest, which, as you know, is one of the most precious remaining, last remaining tropical forests in the world. It they so powerful that it can uh, it in, affects or influences the weather in the rest of the world. He happily opened it for deforestation, allowed. Um, industrial, um, uh, the agro business uh, sector to enter the Amazon forest gave gave licenses and there was massive deforestation. So in the last four years, you had an unprecedented degree of deforestation. So this was the other thing, and this concerned not just Brazil. This worried the rest of the world because it's going to affect everyone. And he completely, uh, you know, did not care. Okay. So moving on uh, now, it was. Uh, the, the, this election was really, you know, uh, Lula has won by a razor thin margin. Now, uh, so this means that Brazil is deeply divided. Now, do you think Lula will be able to carry the nation with him? That is the million dollar question because Lula, whether, see, the Lula now that is returning to power will be very different from the Lula who uh, came around the first time. He, he had massive support and there is really nothing that came in his way. And he was able to implement many of the policies. But this time around, in the Congress, in the Brazilian Congress, the uh, allies of Bolsonaro are in a big majority. Out of some 513 seats, if I'm not mistaken, uh, close to about 240 or 250 uh, members are allies of Bolsonaro. The allies of Lula are just around 140. Yeah, so so 49 and 51 percent. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, what happens is how do you, uh, so how does Lula, you know, how is, uh, how is Lula going to uh, manage this? But one thing going for Lula is that he's considered a great negotiator. He's considered very good in one-to-one uh, -one, uh, discussions in the, you know, in bringing together people in, uh, in organizing a consensus. So that strength should come in handy for him now because it's not going to be easy because, you know, he's, he's, he's going to try to, um, over uh, overturn many of the policies of Bolsonaro. And uh, he is considered a very inclusive leader. He has already in his uh, opening uh, remarks after his victory, he has told everyone that uh, everybody is a Brazilian and he's the president of for everyone and nobody should, you know, look at the past differences. So he's already started making moves, a uh, conciliatory moves in, in for, you know, in regard to everybody, not just uh, his own supporters. Yeah. So uh, my last question, uh, mm. Why do you think the world needs to take note of the Brazilian presidential elections? Why is it so important? Yeah. See, today, um, says we are in a, a world which is seeing a massive political uh, divide, the left versus the right. If you take, for instance, Europe, you have many countries in Europe. Uh, you have Hungary, uh, Orban, then you have uh, the, 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 new, the newly elected uh, president in Italy. And then you have um, even, you know, uh, the UK, which is uh, post-Brexit, has been dominated by the conservatives. So, and you have France, which is also moving uh, very much to the right. So, there is a massive right-wing turn uh, to the world's politics. You have a government in India, which is avowedly um, right-wing. You have, you know, something like um, Erdogan in Turkey, who's again, you know, very deeply conservative, um, religious, you know, heads a religious uh, outfit called the uh, Justice Party. So the, the issue is that it's become, and earlier, see, these changes have happened in uh, recent years, in the last about 10 years or so. If you, uh, so Lula's return, 
is probably a kind of a pushback against this because brazil is not the first country to have done this um, just very recently you had chile also going left uh, a leftist um, government is in power today and so is colombia where you have a, a left government so you see a kind of a, again a rise in um, left politics in latin america and Latin America generally is considered the world's, um, you know, uh, torchbearer in the sense that whatever happens in Latin America today will happen in the rest of the world tomorrow. It's a, it's a kind of a um, uh, maxim that you know, uh, uh, which can be proved if you go back in uh, history. So, is this going to be a part of a larger change, or is this just going to be a flash in the pan? So the rest of the world is also looking because you see countries like uh, you know there is a you know even if you go beyond the left right divide, you see a fight going on between authoritarianly you know uh, governments that are tilting towards authoritarianism versus governments that are for democracy. So Brazil now with Lula back in power, we'll see far more democratization, and this is what uh, is going to change. So it's a it's a what we're going to see in Brazil is something that is also playing out in the rest of the world. In that sense, we though we are far away in India and Brazil is on the other part of the globe, what is happening in Brazil is very crucial for us. We have seen this uh, before I uh, conclude. We also see this in uh, the US where you saw Trump trying to uh, stir up uh, issues after his defeat, which did not, which are completely counter to democratic uh, process. So uh, then you saw Biden coming back. So this kind of uh, issues uh, become very uh, hot, very, very serious. And, you know, uh, so that's why it's uh, important for all of us. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Dakshin Moti. That was very informative. Thank you for all your inputs. Thank you. Subscribe to the Federal's YouTube page for more interesting updates.